What's going on guys, it's Coach Steven with 15 Points of Tennis. And in part one of the series, we discuss the upper body so we can actually stick that volley through the court. Now the volley is one shot where even as a beginner, practicing the wrong technique, you're gonna see improvements in your volley. And that's because your, your reflexes, your coordination and your strength at a beginner level improve really quickly. But as you reach intermediate to advanced, those improvements in athleticism become more and more marginal over time. And then if you have any bad habits or bad technique, you run, your improvement hits this glass ceiling. It grinds to a halt. Your volley stop getting better. And then you see players stop coming to net altogether when ground strokes get much harder and again your net play stagnates. So building off what the foundation in part one of this series Okay, we're gonna complete your training so you're more than just a reflex volley statue at net and doubles, or you know, more than just that opportunistic volleyer who's waiting for that one perfect floating sitter put away volley. No, but you're a, a skilled net player who can come in, create your own opportunities, handle the much more difficult situations. So take a second or two to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the last part of the series we're doing where we talk about how to use your volley skills to obliterate put lobbers and pushers. But we're gonna talk part two of the volley today. So we're gonna start that right now. Now, the volley, more than any other shot, requires quick preparation. Some players literally take the racket back with their arm like this, and that is incorrect, all right? In theory, it's, a, it's kind of an optical illusion because my arm, actually stays completely still it goes it moves back via my unit turn with my shoulders and my hips you see right here my arm didn't move at all the arm movement is actually very very small now if I take my racket back like this it's actually a very slow movement okay also for a lot of players once they go back like this and see my chest lifting up they you completely disengage and you lose a feeling with your core strength all right, when I stay down and I turn, now my arm is very much controlled by my center point of a lot more stability and a lot more speed. Also what we discussed in part one, if you're, you should be in a proper continental grip. The contact point for a continental grip is to the side of you here, okay? It's not out in front like this with my shoulders square to the court. Only pancake grips volley with my shoulders facing straight on forward. Okay, so even a slight turn like this is gonna make a big difference for your contact point. Now, there are some exceptions to the rule of unit turn. Look, if the ball's coming at you 200 miles an hour, look, you aren't gonna get a full unit turn. It might be just, just a slight turn blocking the ball. If the ball is floating at like three miles an hour, yeah, you can take a much bigger backswing, be it a swing volley or an overhead. But I'm talking about here your average volley that's coming hard where stability is the number one priority. When I unit turn, it allows me to shorten my backswing. If I, all this range of motion is gonna to create too much instability. So right here, I can keep it short and quick and still get a lot of punch on my volley. So we're gonna rock into the drill. So we're gonna co come back here to the baseline. So what we're gonna do is use the, the balance boards, all right, to help you practice your unit turn when you volley. So again, not here, it's here, here, hit here, hit. And for some of you guys, it's going to be volleying with completely different muscles, right? You're using a lot of obliques right here and your inner hip muscles to turn, turn here, turn here. Okay, nice and relaxed upper body. Just imagine you're like a boxer, right? You got to stay nice and relaxed. So once you get that unit turn and your unit turning in sync with the ball, all right, we're going to scoot all the way to the very, very, very back fence. And this is a great drill, all right? Because now that you're back on land and you got a unit turn and volley, the back fence is going to ensure that you aren't taking your racket back, right? Right here and turning, turning, boom. Because you should get a lot of power 
from this position, contacting it in your position, position of strength, rather than, you know, disconnecting from your core, a lot of times timing the ball late. Now that we're on the balance boards, I told him to do the first few incorrect. He's just taking the arm back, no unit turn. This is how some players actually volley. Now, but for the correct way, what I'm watching for is his feet turning, his hips turning, and his shoulders turning in unison and in sync with the ball, right? So you know guessing. And whether I throw it softer or faster, he's got to turn at the right speed. Okay. Those two look good. That one looked good. Th those looked in rhythm. Okay, now on the back fence. Again, he's doing it incorrectly on purpose, but this is a great training method so you don't have to tell your student a thousand times not to take the racket back. With both these drills, please also feed some from the basket. We just forgot to demo that here. Now what you're going to see, if the ball is coming fast, a very slight unit turn, but look how quick it comes. All right, now that's a little bit lucky, but you can see it's I can get turned lightning fast and still get in my position of strength. If it's an overhead and floating, I'm going to get more turn. If it's slower, I'm going to get more turn like on that drop volley. But you got to be reading your opponent's shot to kind of know to turn a little bit more or less. Like my average volley, I definitely want to get turned in, in my position of strength. Now one of the most commonly taught mechanics on the volley is to step and hit. To step and hit. And this is good for beginners because it teaches them how to, you know, help them close distance to the ball. It's far better than reaching and being off balance. What's also great about this nice strong step is it helps you stabilize before you hit. So stabilize contact. Stabilize contact. And if the ball is coming super hard to diffuse pace. So if I'm hitting like a drop volley or to take pace off the ball, see so how I can sink with the ball on that, on that front leg with that strong step. Okay, nice soft touch. Now the downside with stepping first is as a step, my momentum is literally going down into the ground. Okay, and what's actually happening is I'm literally off balance falling forward, but my foot catches me from face planting into the ground. All right, so you need to learn how to step and volley but you also need to learn how to jump to close distance. So instead of stepping, it's, it's going to be a jump right here. Okay, and the reason why is, like, here, look, watch my posture. Here's the difference, okay? When I step, my posture goes from straight to tilted forward. Again, I'm going to step straight to tilted forward. Now, when I hop, I'm going to have my weight on my back foot. My posture isn't going to change from here to here. See how my posture didn't change one more time? Here, balance, to here. Alright. And by hopping to close distance, I can now rise up into the ball. I have my momentum and energy going up. So if you ever watch, let's say, a John McEnroe style volley, you know, he's always uh, rising as he hits. And when you're creating pace on your shots, you need two conditions. One, you need to be rising, and two, oftentimes you're airborne at contact. That goes for any stroke. When you hit a serve, I'm rising and airborne at contact. Same with the overhead, a big ground stroke. When you watch all the pros, when they hit huge ground strokes, they load their rise and they're off the ground as they make contact during the weight transfer. Same thing on the volley. I make contact during the weight transfer from my back to my front leg. So watch when I make contact. I'm gonna make contact in the air, load it on my back leg, contact then land contact and then land i still feel this back foot push into the ball contact and then land but that's how you create pace on the volley players who habitually do this every single time to create pace it's a tough habit to break now here's me going down as much as i can and this is not a good strategy to put away floaters Compare that to rising through the ball as I would on an overhead, a ground stroke, or a serve. I'm in the air when I make contact. Now my energy, my legs, my kinetic chain, everything is going from toe all the way to contact. Now here are some lower volleys. I'm going to go down now. I don't know why I alternate going up or down. I'm going to go up. As you can see, I have way more power 
than if I was going down like that. I can still hit it pretty hard going down, but it's just not ideal. Again, down, down, and one more up. Now it's very instructive on these transition volleys. I'm making contact and my front foot hasn't hit the ground yet, so I'm going to contact and then step. This is a big change for a lot of players. In the past, my transition volleys would have popped up. Now I'm really sending my momentum vertically up through the ball. I'll, I have a separate video where I go deeper into this topic, but this is how the old school volleyers used to play, and volley was their lifeblood, so they had to get this right. It's a bit counterintuitive, but you're going to see me actually hit a ball that's low, but I'm still going up, my feet are off the ground. So you can still rise with the legs as you're going down with the hand for low balls. And of course, nothing wrong with going down. Here you're going to see me step hard with that left foot, but what is it? It's a drop shot, because I'm diffusing pace and sinking with the ball to take pace off. You're going to see me right here rise, and then get my foot down and drop. Two very different volleys. So let's watch the master of Pete Sampras hit a few of these rising volleys. And when it comes to technique, you have to understand, is going up better, is going down better? Look, it's always just based on the situation. You can get in big trouble moving up if the ball's coming too hard and too fast, right? But when it comes to punishing volleys, when it comes to creating pace, this is a universal mechanic. All right, we're still turning and putting our momentum into the ball, what we did in those first two parts. But you have to understand that it's not your body that hits the ball, it's your hand that hits the ball. All right, so your body acts as a stabilizer. All right, it's strong and allows you to you know, hit strong volleys, but it doesn't contort to the height of the ball, whether the ball is low, high, or wide. And it definitely, as you make contact, it, it's not supposed to move like this. So what I want you to be mindful of when we think about the midsection is your posture. And having good posture is the only point in time where your body is both relaxed and in a strong position simultaneously. So I want you to imagine basically a, a pole running from the, back, the top of the back of your neck to your tailbone, a straight pole, right? And that's keeping your spine straight. You can also bend at the hips, you have to keep it straight, and you can bend at the knees, but again, I'm not bending, hunching over like this, or I'm not upright like this, you know, arching my back either, okay? Because when you're on a straight axis, that gives you, again, access to strength and re relaxation, but allows you to turn, make un quick unit turns here. When I bent over, I, have, I don't have a position of strength, okay? And I don't have any rotational power if I'm not like on that straight pole that I described. So think about how Federer moves. He's the world's best at keeping that posture. You know, he's making sharp turns, change of direction, you know, swinging and hitting, but he never compromises, you know, that beautiful posture. So, all right, knowing that, if I'm, whether I'm hitting a low volley, let's say right at my, you know, right at my shoestrings, you know, and I'm tilted over at the hips, and volleying down here, whether I hit a medium uh, volley in the middle of my strike zone, or whether I hit the volley at the top of my strike zone, let's say, you know, it's like an overhead, see I'm, I'm tilted back right here, pa! I, I never want to lose that integrity of my, of my posture, okay, because that's my strength, right? And so what happens is, I'd rather, for a low volley, I'd much rather take a half volley or a ball lower in my strike zone down here, then take a, a ball a little bit higher, but have to reach. You see the difference? It's not my body that should contort to the ball to hit. It's my hand, say for a half volley, that reaches down, right? So my hand covers the remainder of the distance. If the ball is high, it's not my body that goes like this, it's my hand that goes up to the ball. And that's very important. So what we're going to practice, the first drill is the Brian Brothers Romanian doubles, where you're moving from side to side and volleying here, 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 here. And this drill is very important because it teaches you your hand moves independently from your body. So high volley, low volley, high volley, low volley, 
right? It's not my body moving like this. Now I'm keeping that same posture as I move, okay? Now I should still feel that connection to my core at contact. <clears throat> core strength, core strength. <clears throat> I still feel that core engagement at contact every time, but my hand moves independently. The second drill we're gonna focus on is because so many people are leaning and taking these weird steps when they volley, right, and they're off balance, is helping you internalize the feeling of taking the body motion out of the swing and feeling still at contact and getting that snap with, with the tip of the racket, okay? Even if it's just, just a little bit, right? So we're gonna hit a volley on one leg. You get someone who can feed accurately or even toss to you, that's fine, but on one leg you're gonna volley, pa, right here, pa, and try to keep this as still as possible and just stop after contact, all right? And this feeling of just being able to snap, feel that the hand snap right here while engaging your core strength and keeping it still, try to internalize pa right here. And that's that same feeling as your unit turning and moving, I want you to get on that volley and you work it back into the other concepts. So we're doing a version of Romanian doubles kind of a, the wimpy version, we're not hit, hitting the ball back and forth very hard. You can use this as a warm-up drill or just with players at different levels, but it's actually a great drill for learning how to poach in doubles because you have to turn to your left moving right and you have to turn to your right moving left and practice moving both ways. Most times players only can turn to their left moving left or their right moving right. And this is an excellent drill for control, okay? Being able to move your hand independently from your body at different contact points. Now the diagonal way how we're doing it here is excellent for helping your eye and training your eye to see the angles and then hitting and striking the different parts of the ball, getting your shoulders more or less turned to account for the, all the angle changes. Great drill for both doubles and singles players alike. Now if you're advanced and want to scale the drill up to your skill level, just do it like the Brian Brothers. Next we're going to tackle the one-legged volleys and this is going to force you to keep your center of balance, your head still, and your body still. So if the ball is out of your strike zone, if the ball is too close to you, it's going to knock you off balance. So it's going to teach you to really engage your core strength and not feel like you're leaning or reaching. This is what I'm trying to avoid right here for most players. And you can get away with this body contortion. The problem is it's so hard to aim this way when you're moving two variables at once. Your aim is going to suck. All right. In order to aim, you have to be able to keep your upper body quiet and only have one variable moving at contact then you have pure and total control over what should be your hand at contact. Now if you're doing all these things, good posture, balance, moving your hand to the ball, half volleys should be in your arsenal. That's pretty much all it is, your hand covering the rest of the distance that you're unwilling to break your posture for or reach, right? And this is going to give you so much more confidence coming into the net because especially I mean even at my level but look at Pete Sampras's level his opponents are constantly putting the ball you know by his shoestrings up above the shoulders etc and so he's got to move with that great posture and move his hand to the ball. Now we've been told a million times to always contact the ball far out in front as in front of us as we can. Right? Just hit the ball in front. That's just a common advice. Right? And that's not bad for a beginner just so you can get the racket up and ready and, and not be late to the ball. But hitting the ball early every single time and out in front has its limitations at a higher level. So let's talk about your strike zone and your position of strength. So right here is where I feel the most stability and access to my core. Right? Boom! Right here where I'm strong. For every inch I start to make contact in front of that point, I start, I'm reaching now. I'm reaching and reaching, and the more I reach, now I have no access and stability from my core. My core is completely destabilized. Think about in baseball, all right? If you contact the ball right, boom, right here in your power zone, versus even an inch, it makes a huge difference. The difference between 
here being a home run versus here is like home run, knocking it out of the park, and like a pop-up ball, all right? And it's a shame that some coaches oversimplify the sport of tennis that you just hit early every single time because it's not like that in any other sport. So we're gonna focus on a concept today, one of my favorites called wall to the ball. And it's to help you always sort of remember and retain where your strike zone is. So the concept is when I'm hitting, I imagine, I visualize having this wall in front of me, all right? Just right alongside here. And I can contact the ball at any point in that wall, whether it's here, 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 here. Now it's not a perfect concept because I know that on a low volley, I can contact the ball a little further in front of me, that's fine, but just bear with me. But see this wall? I'm strong at every point on that wall. Once I reach in front of that wall, I'm done. So I never wanna reach, I actually have to be very patient for the ball to come up and wait to hit that wall and pa hit it right back here. Now, I can wait for the ball to come to the wall and hit back here, or I can move my wall up to the ball, all right? And so instead of reaching those last few inches like this, I have to think about my feet, attack with my feet, and boom, and then move the wall up to the ball. So what we're gonna practice is your transition volleys. You're gonna keep, just for this drill, you're gonna keep your arm completely still, okay? And you're gonna find your position of strength right here. And on the transition volley, you're not gonna move your arm at all. You're just gonna boop and keep moving through, all right? Backhand, turn, boop, and keep moving through. You guys are gonna be, and myself included, are gonna be so tempted just to reach in front of you, but you've gotta resist that, intention, that temptation and get internal is that feeling of hitting a solid volley. Imagine like you're a goalie moving forward. You're, you're a goalie just protecting the net. You're just catching the ball on your strings in a position of strength. This is really a must do drill because when I'm doing this properly and I know my structure is so strong and sturdy, that gives me the confidence to take more risk on my volleys, to hit it harder, to hit it closer to the lines with more precision and more accuracy. Just like a beginner, if I'm reaching on my volleys, I'm gonna have trouble on even my basic volleys. What I wanna be is that wall moving forward. And this does take a lot of patience still for me to really wait for the ball to hit the wall. If I'm thinking, oh, I need to hit this ball, I need to hit it. Well, I'm gonna be early and reach in front of my wall every single time. If I think, okay, I'm just gonna meet the ball on my strings, I'm gonna let the ball come to me and just meet it. Then most times I can catch it where I'm strong and stable, just like that one. And wall to the ball isn't a volley specific concept. I use it most on the volley, but overheads, ground strokes, just pretty much everything comes down to your strong contact point. All right, watch Pete Sampras' center point. It doesn't change, he just keeps on moving through. So thanks guys, we're gonna wrap this video right here. If these concepts are the first time you're hearing it, don't feel overwhelmed, go through it slowly, but make sure each of these drills you can do with a high level of proficiency. What I want you to feel in a lot of these are actually a more subtle feelings, but it's gonna make a difference. All these, you know, three percenters, five percenters are gonna add up big time for your execution. So I really hope I gave you a path forward to turn your volley into a weapon, make your net play a heck of a lot more fun. So look forward to your comments, post below how these drills are working for you. I look forward to reading them and seeing you in, that, in the last part where we talk about smashing those balls out of the air and putting those lobbers and pushers away.